Youth Sunday. If you haven't figured it out from uh, yet, our youth are leading the service from music to the lesson, and we are so excited to hear what God is teaching them and what they're learning this year. So I'm just really excited for you to be a part of that, and we know that it might be chaotic and a little loud at times, but I think that's just a whole part of the fun, and we're really excited for them to get to teach you today. So, um, oh, I just wanted to introduce Ashlyn. If you haven't met Ashlyn yet, she is our middle school youth director or youth pastor. Yeah. Ashlyn, so she's leading the worship band today, and they've done a lot of work to prepare worship music for you. So I'm really excited to have them. Um, so today is an opportunity for our kids to experience the rhythms of church and the rhythms of worship. And we just really think that this is really important for our kids to know what it's like to be a part of the greater body of Christ. And so we're really excited for them to learn about that. And we invite you, as Jesus said, to become like a child today as you enter worship and you open your ears to hear what our kids share about God today. Lord, help us to see you through the eyes of our children today. Amen. So please stand and join us as we sing.
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God goodness of God. I love your voice. You will let me through the fire in the darkest nights. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have been in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to join together um, as 
young and old um, and everything in between, Lord, that you just continue to fill this place with your presence today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are seated. I feel like I'm playing Tim today, so <laughs> I don't have many jokes because I'm super nervous. But I'm Deanna Gamp, and I hang out with kids downstairs in the kids' club for first through fifth grade. So we are super glad that you guys are here today, and it's going well so far, I must say. <laughs> Um, we want you, we invite you to get the app if you haven't already, so you can find out more about us. Um, and you'll find the Sunday program, all the announcements the button for text to give, the button to fill out a connection card so you can get connected with us and just let us know more about you. And now we have a couple kids that are going to share some announcements. So we have Cedric and Chloe, if you want to come over here. And you can do this. We have very exciting, we are very excited to have Eagle Lake Camp at our church again this year. Our camp goes from 8.30 through 4.30 each day of the week of June 6th through June 10th. We need lots of volunteers to help make our camp run smoothly and super fun. You can visit our website to sign up as a volunteer or email Deanna Gamp. That's me. Thanks, Chloe. So at this time, we're going to invite all of our preschoolers to come up to the stage. So you guys can use these steps right while we watch an eagle, oh yeah, <laughs> while we watch a video of what Eagle Lake Camp is like. Let's take a look. I'm the family life pastor. I get to hang out with babies through kindergartners, and we got a few of our friends up here already excited about this today. But first, I wanted to share our verse for the day. If we could get that up there, it's Matthew 18, 2 through 3. It says, Jesus called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So I thought about right after reading this verse of putting a picture of my child having a meltdown because her cookie broke in two. But then I decided I didn't want to scar her for life because I know it's being live streamed. So, um, but, you know, I was th I've been, we've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about this for a while. What does it mean to become like a child? 
to enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, Well, one thing I've learned as a parent is that kids will tell you exactly how they feel very loudly, what they think and what they want you or to, to, to tell you or what they need from you at every single moment, no matter if it's two in the morning or six in the morning or whatever. Uh, but they tell you what they feel, what they need and what they're thinking, right? Have any of you ever been sad, really sad? No? Really mad about something? No? Yeah, well, oh, Dylan's telling me he has. Yeah, they feel everything very fully, right? So kids, they approach life authentically. They are truly themselves. And I hope today that you can hear and see what it's like to approach Jesus being fully yourself in the good and in the bad, right? I challenge you and we challenge you, our kids today, to think about how you can become more like a child. Okay, kiddos, let's stand up. All of my kids. Faith, I want to introduce you to Faith real quick, too. She is our preschool assistant. She's going to help today with our... Yeah, please get to know Faith. She's in seminary, and she's great, and we want her to stay forever, so we love her. Um, Everybody, I want you to watch Faith. We're going to do our memory verses that we've been practicing in in class, okay? So Faith is going to do our motions, and we're going to follow her and say our memory verses. In January, so I'm going to put the next verse up. Uh, We learned Matthew 19, 26, as we talked about uh, God's miracles. Okay, ready? Everybody get your fingers ready to point them up into the sky. Great job! Yeah! And then in February, we're, we learned about loving each other. Uh, so our next verse is, and, uh, and how much God loves us. So it's 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Okay, ready? Get your feet ready. Oh boy. And then in March, we learn Matthew 4 through 19 about following Jesus. Oh, oh yes, that is a drink. It looks delicious. Okay, ready? <laughs> ready? Watch, Miss Faith. Um, <gasps> yeah, great job. Great job. Okay, and next. Our next verse, oh, I forgot to uh, put this one on a slide, but it's really exciting. We are learning a verse. Can we teach all the parents a new verse? Should we have them stand up and all of our friends in high school and all of our friends? And everybody stand up. We are going to teach you a memory verse today. This is our new one that we're going to do here in May. Okay, ready? God saw everything he had made. And it was very good. Do you think they were loud enough? Should we have them do it one more time? Oh, yeah. I think we could be louder. Ready? God saw everything he had made. And it was very good. Oh, let's Let's applause for our parents and our friends. Good job, everybody. You can sit down. Right now, I'm going to invite all the Kids Club kids. You guys can have a seat again. We're going to have a children's sermon with our um, Kids Club kids today. So come on up. You can come on up the stairs. You can mute me. Call me crazy, right? (laughs) Who brings a giant thing of water up with children? (laughs) Okay. All right. Can you guys all see this jug of water that might be right behind you? You guys can turn around if you want. Okay. Quinn, will you come up over here? 
So in April, we talked about hope, right, Quinn? Yes. Yes. And in, in April, we talked about hope. So Quinn is going to read our memory verse, and I'm going to hold, you hold this, and I'm going to hold the Bible for you. I have told you, so I, I told you these things so that you can you ha- can have peace and because of me. In the world, you will have trouble, but be encouraged. I have won the battle over the world. Good job, Quinn. All right, so that is a reminder that hard times might come to us, but we can have hope because God sees the big picture and hope and faith go hand in hand. When we have faith in God, we can have hope. Russell, will you read me the other thing? No. Okay. Annika, do you want to read? Okay. We have another verse that is from Hebrews. Come on over here and you can stand and I'll show it to you. This is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Good job. All right. All right. So we talked about Thomas last week, and Thomas had some doubts and questions about Jesus. He felt like he needed to see Jesus with his own eyes in order to believe that Jesus was alive. The writer of Hebrews says we can have faith even in things we cannot see. So I'm going to show you guys something right now. I have a can of regular Coke, and I have a can of Diet Coke. And I'm going to tell you that one of these is going to sink, and one of them is going to float. Uh, Right? Do you believe me? No, right? You don't believe? You do already. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna tell you some information. They both have the same amount of liquid in them and they are made of the same exact materials. The regular Coke has a lot of sugar in it. This Diet Coke has artificial sweetener and it's a lot sweeter than sugar so they don't need very much. Now does anybody have any other ideas? Are you more strongly convinced that one will sink? Which one do you think, Dylan? Uh, The red can you think is going to sink? Yeah. And you think this is going to float? All right, let's see what happens. Are you ready? What do you think is going to happen? Oh, Dylan, you might be right. Dylan's right so far. Cedric thinks this one's going to float. Who? Raise your hand if you think it's going to float. Yeah? You believe me without seeing? You haven't even seen it yet. You're right, eventually. I'm so glad that worked. (laughs) Didn't work in the practice last week, so. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. In the Bible, we have stories about who Jesus is and why we can put our faith in him. If we choose to believe, it's not because we've actually seen Jesus with our eyes. It's because we've made a choice to believe. And reading the Bible, listening to leaders at church, And hearing stories from people of what God has done in their lives can help us become sure of what we believe. Can you guys pray with me? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for caring about our questions. You are so big and powerful, but you care about every concern, every doubt, every worry, and every question we have. Please help us trust you and remind us to go to you when questions arise in our world around us. We want you to be our source of truth in puzzling times. Please remind us that whatever happens, God is bigger than our questions. Amen. All right, guys, thanks. You guys ready to go have a seat? And then if you are Ayla and Madeline, you're going to come up here and share some stuff with us.
tell you, while everybody's going back to sit down, that my favorite part about being in kids club is the things that kids say and tell me. And so a couple weeks ago, we were making a banner for Hope, which you can see downstairs. I have them hung up. And we're coloring these letters. And this little girl goes, I want to color mine like Jesus' favorite color. Could you please look up what Jesus' favorite color is? <laughs> and I was like, okay. Who, what, co what color would you like to use? A couple minutes later, she's like, so did you Google that for me? Because I really need you to Google that. Get out my phone. I actually Googled what Jesus' favorite color was. So that's the kind of fun stuff I get to do. It was hilarious. It, um, well, they don't really know is what it said. And then they said purple that you could use. And we, we thought about candy canes, so we talked about red and white stripes. That was what we got to. It felt decently successful. <laughs> All right, Ayla, come on over here. Ayla is going to share with you her favorite life app that we talk about in Kids Club. Go ahead. My favorite life act is compassion, and compassion means caring enough to do something about somebody else's needs. That's awesome, Mayla. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Madeline is going to share about individuality. All right, yeah, perfect. Come right over here. Go for it, Madeline. My favorite life app is individuality, which means discovering who you're meant to be which is why I'm wearing a Christmas dress, and I brought her. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Madeline. We have some awesome individuals in our kids' club that we love, each and every one of them. Thanks so much, guys, for sharing. I think we're ready to have some youth group kids come up. Good morning. My name is Allison Motzenbacher. Um, I am the youth pastor here, and um, Taylor, my husband, and I have been working with the youth group for about six years now, and now we have Ashlyn Hamilton joining us, which has been wonderful, um, helping out with the junior high youth group. So we have just been having a good time for a lot of years with these, <laughs> these kids, and um, I mean, truly one of the biggest joys, I would say, in all of our lives, if I can speak for you, Ashlyn, and certainly Taylor and I, is getting to work with these kids here at church. I mean, they're just so wonderful. We feel like we learn from them all the time, so we're really excited that you all get to experience learning from them today, too. So um, the junior hires and high schoolers are going to share some of their favorite verses from Scripture and why they are important to them. So we're going to bring up Molly. Hi, um, so today I'm going to be sharing the verse of Philippians 4, 6. Um, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So this verse is important to me because I suffer with a lot of anxiety, um, and this verse has shown me that God is there to listen even when I feel as if I'm alone and there's nobody to help me. Um, if you have anxiety or you feel alone, I hope that this verse will help you to know that God is there to listen and to love you and help you to overcome those um, aloneness and anxiety feelings. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Grace? Hi, I'm Grace, and my favorite verse is Matthew 17, 20. It says, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing is impossible for you. I like this verse because I struggle with thinking I'm not good enough or thinking I can't do something, and this just reminds me that with God, I can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Bia? Hi, I'm Bia, and I'm going to be reading a passage from Five Minute Bible Verses. God watched in sorrow as Adam and Eve walked away. 
He knew that Adam and Eve would grow tired from cutting and hauling wood to build their houses. He knew that they would be hungry when there was not enough rain to make their garden grow. This made God sad, for even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed him, God still loved them. So Adam and Eve made a mistake. It is impossible for humans to be perfect, as I have found out multiple times. And since I deal with perfectionism and feeling like I have to be perfect, I can't make any mistakes, this was kind of like a message for me to let go. And it was like my freedom of you don't have to be perfect. Um, I know for some people that telling you that you can't be perfect is kind of like enclosing you into a trapped box or something, but for me it was my message to let go. Hi, I'm Ruby. Uh, so I'm sharing something from uh, Jonah. Um, and Jonah was one of God's followers, but when God, God asked uh, Jonah to go to Nineveh, first Jonah went to Tarshish. He was wanting, he was running away. Um, but uh, And he told the Ninevites that if they're going to die if they don't, like, um, shape up. And um, and God God forgave them, but Jonah was mad that he did. And uh, God also forgave Jonah over and over and over again. And um, but the Ninevites like they worshipped uh, different gods, and uh, they didn't experience God's love and forgiveness. And I thought about it and said to myself, Wow, God is really forgiving. He forgave them. He forgave the Ninevites and he and Jonah. He, um, even though Joni, Jonah, Jonah was rude and pouty, God still forgave him over and over again. Even though Jonah was rude, it made me feel like God really liked, loved us. Thank you, guys. Please join me in prayer, dear Lord. I thank you so much for. Uh, the joy that it is to get to worship and just celebrate you through these these children and and these young people. Um, thank you for their courage to share their thoughts and their gifts with us today. And I pray that you would help us to approach you just as they do, like innocent children. Pray all these things in your name. Amen. Hi guys, I'm Hannah. I'm a senior in youth group and I'm really sorry I couldn't be here this Sunday. I have to work. But um the verse I'm gonna share with you guys that um has always stuck out to me is Second Timothy chapter one verse seven and it says for the spirit God gave us is not to make us timid, but to give us power, love, and self discipline. And I think this verse this verse has always stuck out to me. I remember we did a Bible study in middle school back in my old church. And um, that was one of the verses that our, like, leader pointed out to us and said it was her favorite. And so it's always kind of stuck out to me, too. Um, and I think that's just because, like, I tend to be, I'm a very shy person, if any of you know me. Um, and sometimes okay, I'm okay at branching out of my comfort zone. And sometimes it's really hard. And so I think this verse has always, like, comforted me, like, we weren't made to be timid or scared or shy, like, we're made to go out of our comfort zone, and I think it's always a good reminder that, like, God is going to be there for us no matter what, um, despite the fact that we're scared, like, he's trying to push us out of that, and so, yeah, that's kind of always why it stuck out to me, um, so, yeah, thank you all for coming to Youth Sunday. Friends, now we come to the table of communion where we, we remember that Jesus is present with us. And in this sacrament, we receive spiritual nourishment. So, first, the bread. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and said, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat in the remembrance of me. After supper, um, Jesus took some wine and said, or juice, and said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you, take and drink. At this time, you can come to the table of communion. Serving us this morning is Jade and Noah, 
and Noah and Isaac. And if you have never received communion before here at Platt Park, or if it's just been a while, you'll come forward and break off a piece of the bread and hear the words, the body of Christ broken for you. And you can take that bread and dip it in either the juice or the wine and hear the words, the blood of Christ shed for you. Come forward as you are ready. as we sing.
seated. Oh, we did it. All right, I'm just going to say a little quick prayer right now while Elsie and Annika come up. Father God, I just thank you so much for this beautiful time we had together, and I'm so thankful that every kiddo, including myself, was brave enough to do this, and you gave us all courage, and I so thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Elsie, come over here. Here you go. Thank you for joining us today. Please join, or please come back after our second service at 11:45 and join us for the Platte Park Platypalooza. Please join me in saying these words. May, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever He may send you. May he guide you in the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring your home rejoicing at the wonders he had shown you. And now when you are rejoicing, once again to our doors, go in grace and peace and love and serve the Lord. I thought I was done. <laughs>